class you have to appear to me physically so it's no difference when you have an online class everybody must show the attendance full dress up to to uh putu blaja ilmu yeah uh, so let's uh, open your camera first i wouldn't start the um, lecture unless i see everybody on the screen wherever you are okay i allow another one minutes yeah don't make me repeat again please on your camera Okay, good. Uh, I'm waiting for some more people to join. Right. First and foremost, who is the class rep for this particular semester? Who's the class rep? Can I know who's the class rep? Uh, and you are? Muhammad Adam. Okay, all right. Muhammad Adam. Who's the assistant class rep? Assistant class rep? Uh, saya, Sabrina. Sabrina, good. Okay. And Adam, how many of you in one class? Twenty-seven today. Thank you very much. Okay. So it's good to see everybody. All right. We have Rauzah, Rauzah, yeah. Zikifli. I'm calling your names. Um, if you do not yet show your screen you bound to answer my first question. So I want to see everybody on the screen now. Right, okay, smashing, very good, okay. Stay um, stay uh, open until the end of this uh, particular lecture. All right, uh, okay, let me just do a very quick introduction first of all, since this is the first time we meet each other, okay, uh, maybe um, this is my last time with uh, UITM students, but uh, I have a pleasure meeting all of you here. So um, let me just do a formal uh, introduction first of all, right? Um, after that, I will give you one minute, so two minutes to give you a shout, uh, just to tell me what is your name, at least since this is our first class, okay? So, uh, for your information, uh, there's going to be two lecturers handle this particular class, myself and Dr. Anis Rosniza. Later on, you will have, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, what do you call it, a brief introduction by Dr. Uh, Anis Rosniza, but for now, let me just uh, introduce myself. I'm Prof. Madia Sewe Hasmawati Harun, um, your lecturer for the first seven weeks or so, okay? Now, the reason why it's going to be for a short while, because this is my last year of service, I'm going to actually do the pensions in June this year. Okay, so I've been uh, here uh, with academics and also industry for the last 37 years. Yeah, a very long time indeed. Um, I'm a consultant by background and also at the same time, I'm uh, what do you call it, an academician. I will save the rest of my introductions later once I meet you in person. But for many of the students or lecturers in UITM, yeah, they just call me Bonde Haas, okay? Uh, put away all the professor, mother, survey and everything. I'm more comfortable to be called Bonde because I think that is the ultimate uh, respect to me as a human being, okay? All right, for the time being, I will pass over to Dr. Rose Anis. Um, I see her just now. Is Dr. Anis Rose, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm not okay. Okay. At least I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay. Can you hear my voice? Yes, good. Okay. My name is Dr. Anis Rusniza Nizam Akbar. Um uh, for this class, okay, five 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 six, okay, for for E, yeah, for E. Is it correct? From for E? For C, okay, okay. Uh, for this class, we will share uh, me, myself, and Prof. Uh, Professor Mandia uh, Hasmawati will share uh, the, the the classes lah. Maknanya within uh, first week until week 
8 will be conducted by Professor Madia Asmawati or we call Bonder. Okay, and then continue with me lah. Okay, until the end of this semester. So anything uh, you can contact uh, Bonder or me. Okay, thank you. That's all from me. Thank you, Bonder. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you will have a bit longer sessions with Dr. Anis Rosniza when she meets you face-to-face uh, -face later on. We want to cut short the introduction for today because we want to keep going because time is very pressing this year, especially when you have Hari Raya around the corner. Okay, I will go one round. Just shout your name and where you are actually bersiaran from. Daripada, daripada mana anda bersiaran? Very, very quickly. Over to you, Adam. Where are you from? Kat mana you bersiaran? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ashraf? Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, saya Ashraf Idris. Saya sekarang di rumah saya di Puchong Selangor. Puchong Selangor. Okay, nice to meet you. Aisha? Siti Aisha? Um... My name is Siti Asyam Tika Mahadin. Uh, saya tengah bersiaran dari Puncak Alam Selangor. Puncak Alam, okay. Rafa? Yes, uh, I'm from Kuching, Sarawak. Uh, Kuching, Sarawak, okay. Alright, Akilah? Uh, I can call me Akilah. Uh, I'm in Terengganu. Penang? Terengganu. Oh, Terengganu, okay. Alright. Faj Hira, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Faj Hira? Uh, Fahira. Fahira. Okay. Uh, and I am from Sri Skandar. Sri Skandar Johor or Perak? Perak. Perak, okay. Uh, Irdina. I'm from Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. Okay, good. Ain? Ain Izati? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm from Bera Pahang. Pahang. Okay. Aida? I'm from Puncak Alam, Selangor. Puncak Alam. Where's Aida just now? There are two Aida here, is it? Nur yes. Aida, Liana? Uh, I'm from Alusna, Kedah. You are in Kedah now, is it? Okay. Rauza? Yes. Um, I am from Kuala Selangor. Kuala Selangor. Izzatul? Uh, I'm from Rawang Selangor. Rawang Dini? I'm from Kota Baru, Kelantan. Kota Baru. Arfrina? I'm from Kajang Selangor. Kajang. Nabila? I'm from Teluk Intan Perak. Teluk Intan Perak. Farish? Uh, I live in Sha'alam, Section U10. Okay. Adriana? Hi, I'm from Sha'alam. Sha'alam. Hilwina. Hi, I'm, you can call me Zara and I'm from Plantan. Plantan. Alif. Uh, Bahaya I'm nama Alif sekarang ni ya? Alif. Bahaya nama Alif sekarang ni ya Alif? Uh, panggil Haikal, madam. Haikal, okay Haikal. <laughs> Haikal, uh, where you bersiaran? Seremban, bismillah. Seremban. Sabrina. I am from Segamat, Johor. Segamat, Darwish. Huh? I'm from Aimolik, Melaka. Aimolik. Okay, Shamira? Uh, I'm from Sungai Petani, Kedah. Natasha? Hi, I'm from Sungai Besi, Kuala Lumpur. Sungai Besi, Ain Najiba? Hi, I am from Kota Baru, Kelantan. Kota Baru, Kelantan. Shazlin. Hi, I'm from Kuala Kerai, Kelantan. Okay, all right. Anyone that I, I didn't mention? Anybody what's, whosoever who are not here that I didn't mention? I hope I mentioned everybody. Anybody that I left out? No? Okay, good. So I can see that there's quite a number of you from Sha'alam. 
a few from Kota Baru. Yeah, you're spread all over the place. So it's good to know that uh, you have another two more weeks. Uh, after Hari Raya, you will meet us in person at the faculty. But for now, we will stay online. Um, it's such a blessing to be online, especially during Ramadan. Okay, so I wish you all selamat berpuasa. And hopefully this particular round, we have a very, uh, how should I say, uh, Ramadan yang uh, penuh berkat. Yeah, especially uh, during our work as a students, uh, mencari ilmu dan sebagai seorang pecarah, yeah, memberi ilmu. Mudah-mudahan usaha kita, usaha kita semua diberkati. I just want to say something to myself, uh, to everybody here. First of all, every classes that I masuk, every time I come into classes, I always started with this, okay? Uh, pasal niat dahulu, okay? So hari ni saya nak bawa tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian untuk pasal niat. Kenapa you nak belajar hari ni? So niatkan dalam hati bahawa Ya Allah Ya Tuhanku, ya, yeah, uh, saya hadir ke dalam majlis ilmu ini untuk mendapat barakah daripada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Every time you go to school, whichever class you enter, I want you to niat. Because bila kita niat, kita dapat pahala. Apabila kita puasa, kita tak niat, kita sia-sia sahaja perbuatan lapar dan dahaga kita. So, segala benda mesti disertakan dengan niat. It's setiap kelas. Never forget that. You kena ikhlas untuk menuntut mencari ilmu. Setiap kali saya mula kelas, saya kata, Ya Allah, Ya Tuhanku, ikhlaskanlah. Ya, usaha saya mengajar anak-anak ini, mudah-mudahan usaha saya ini diberkati Allah Subhanahu SWT. Okay, you will see me, hearing me, uh, will say this every time I start a class. I've been doing that since I was 20 and I'm now 60 years old. I've been saying the same thing to all my classes, okay. Itu satu ya, niat. Niat tu sangat penting. Yang keduanya adalah adab. Adab dalam kita menuntut ilmu. I'm sorry um, to to giving you this particular pet talk early in the morning but it's very essential because this is our first time meeting. Adab. Ya, adab itu datang dahulu daripada ilmu. Maknanya setiap kali kita menuntut ilmu, ya kita kena faham bahawa kita dah dalam satu uh, fasa di mana pesyarah kita adalah kita punya guru. Ya, yeah. so ada adab kita menuntut ilmu di mana kalau boleh ya yeah, kita sertakan uh, what do you call it um, budaya menuntut ilmu yang baik. Saya tak nak go on in any detail but I am sure you are big enough to understand. Okay, so uh, spend one minute or two ya yeah, to recite some some doa as well. Mudah-mudahan Allah terangkan hati you all untuk menerima ilmu dalam keadaan yang uh, tenang dan aman. Okay. So enough about that. Okay, in my class, it's compulsory for everybody to talk in English. However broken your English is, it has to be in English. Why? Because the syllabus is in English. And I saw that at least in my class, the students are trying very hard to converse in English. I don't care whether you have a broken English. I don't care whether you have upside down English. As long as you try hard to converse in English. My observation is like this, okay? If you are very comfortable in mixing your languages up to a certain point when you actually go and present in front of your clients, um, especially clients that involve non-native uh, Malay speakers, you bound to have a problems. So start early, start now. As I said, I wouldn't tolerate anybody to speak in Malay in my class whatsoever, despite uh, unless, unless uh, you are actually blank and have shock of vocabulary. In that case, then you can resort to Malay if that will facilitate, facilitate your understanding. Am I clear about that? Am I clear? Okay, all right. The second thing I want is that I hate quiet classes. In my class, I want students to shout at me. Okay? To me, a quiet class is just a one-way traffic. I would like students to actually uh, play around with me because we are here together to create this learning experience. So if I ask questions and if, let's say, you skip quiet and you actually do delay in answering my ans uh, questions, well, I will exit out of this particular classroom. I'm serious about it. Are, are, we, are we clear on that? Are we clear? 
Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. So when I ask you a questions, I want immediate reply. I'm very impatient when it comes to students keep quiet and very passive because I myself, you can imagine, I'm 60 years old and I'm as passionate as ever. Um, ever since I stepped as a quantity surveyor when I was 20 at your age, until now, my passions is still burning. I'm highly motivated. So I'm sure as a teenager, which are very young, vibrant, I want you all to be to break to break these eyes, you know, and try your best to answer. So after this, as I'm very if ever anything I ask any questions, I expect everybody to actually quickly answer. I don't care whether it's from the left to the right to the bottom or whatever. Please answer. Are we clear? Okay, good. And any time that I move so fast and you don't understand, feel free to say to me that, Prof, can you repeat that again? We don't understand. Okay, I don't mind doing that, but I will try to speak as slow as possible. I wouldn't move on until you understand. To me, the very important part of lecture is to deliver the fundamental. If your fundamental is very strong, whatever situation or questions comes in, you can tackle that situation. The problem is when the student doesn't have a very good fundamental so it's very important to have an experienced teaching staff to teach you all so that your fundamental is very strong all right so whatever questions comes um, in front of you at least you can actually use your fundamental knowledge to actually tackle those questions okay enough about that i'm going to put um what do you call it several link that i already share with you in your um, WhatsApp, so, yeah? so I'm going to actually share the screen now. I'm going to move very fast, okay? But uh, I really hope that you can keep up with me. And as I said, if I move so fast, then please um, be very, very uh, alert to give me a shout, okay? I was, I use the word shout because, yeah, uh, that's represent me, uh, very much me. Okay, all right. Let me just go to your, your WhatsApp just now. I send you quite a few. Okay. Um, okay. We will go by this WhatsApp notes. Okay. And you can see or not the WhatsApp, ladies and gentlemen. Can you see the screen? Right. Yeah. So in this WhatsApp, I give you several notes. You can open one by one. And please bear in mind, don't keep it in the forms of a soft copy because is there for you to get it printed and bind nicely. Please bind your notes here yeah? and do not leave it in iPad or whatever it is. It, uh, please open your notes and get it bounded and please don't think you know. I know this is like IT uh, savvy world whereby everybody keep in the iPad, but you want to have a collection of notes, so please, it's okay to waste a bit of money to get it printed and bounded, okay? It's for your own good. Now, I share you this particular link. I'm going to use this particular link and also, uh, what do you call it, um, a lecture schedule to start it off with. Now, I'm going to open this one. And if you have this already in your WhatsApp group, I'm going to introduce you to the class very quickly and I'm going to go through the lecture schedule with you. Okay, if I share this, so I hope everybody will, will okay, all right, they're done sharing with that. Okay, I hope you can see this. Um, okay, is it clear? Is it clear? So I got to present, okay? See, okay now? Can no, you see bro. this? Can you see that? No, not yet, bro. Not yet. Okay, let me just make sure that it's been presented. Come on, let me try once more.
sorry about that. I miss um, pressing the button. Uh, let me just do that again. Okay, all right. Now you have the slides in front of you, but uh, I will try to use the one I share with you in your WhatsApp. As I said, the WhatsApp is my main reference, okay, for the time being, because that is the slide I'm going to base on. Can you see that? Yes, okay, all right. I use yes, this sir. one. I use this one, it's easier. I don't have to present it in the forms of a bit slight anyway. So this is the first lecture. So first of all, getting to know your lecturers is very important because we're going to spend about 14 weeks together. Okay, so you know that already who's actually teaching you and a little bit of your plan of studies, introductions to BQS 556 um, the course informations and learning outcomes, syllabus content, assessment, course requirement, questions and answer. Right, I'm, I'm not going to use everything here. I'm just going to use part of it. Okay, first of all, you have us, okay, throughout, throughout the fall semester. Um, uh, get to know us in within the 14 weeks uh, you are with us, okay? Um, right, uh, this is your part four. And you know that uh, BQS 556 is one of the subjects that you need to actually learn from this semester. All right. And then um, it's a uh, core subjects. Okay. It's three hours credit hours. All right. Meaning to say that it's very important to make sure that everybody actually attended the class because this is the core subjects, you know. This is the basis of becoming a very good quantity surveyor, okay. We have also um, uh, some course informations about um, construction economy. Basically, if I just describe this in a nutshell, the course is aimed to explore and introduce the students yeah, between the types of course information available to the quantity surveyors. So once the students are aware of the various types of course information, they can use it in estimating. Right? That is the very gist of this particular uh, subject area. First of all, you need to understand, yeah, what are the course data, the type of course data or course information, and how to use course information to do your course estimating. I wouldn't be bothered to actually discuss what is cost modeling yet at this stage. I want to keep it simple for the time being so that you don't get confused. Okay. So basically this year you are going to do a very easy breezy kind of estimates and when you're going to do your estimates you are going to make full use of cost data all right but in the advance of information technology and software there are a numbers of software that can facilitate uh, estimating process however for the purpose of study at 04, we are not going to delve on the software into any details, but we are going to glance through how we can use software in order to do estimating purposes because eventually when you go out to work, every different company has different software to do estimating. So remember, learning can come in a formal class can also be picked up during your industry training. So either you learn everything in class or save some of the learning during the industry training. So I let you discover about the software for estimating once you go out. Nevertheless, having said that, you are going to actually learn about Revit, about Cube course golden in your measurement subject, which you also can use for estimating purposes. Okay. Now, what is the course learning outcome? What do you mean by the course learning outcome? At the end of this particular study, what we hope the student will gain. Okay. What are the takeaways? What you can take away from this particular subject? See? The very, very least you know where to find the cost data. 
that is the very least of expectation at zero four. If somebody asks you, or your mother asks you, uh, mak nak cari cost data untuk atap untuk rumah kita, at least you can advise your mother where you can get the quotation for the cost of roofing, for example. That's the very least. But more than that, you'll be able to see whether the cost data is reliable or not. Whether you can use the cost data right away or whether you have to actually adjust the cost data to update it to the current time. So it's very important to understand that cost data must be updated and current. Otherwise, you cannot come up with a realistic uh, estimate that reflects the current point in time. So the cost data must be current. So we need to say that it has to be at this particular day, date and time, if possible. So can I ask the question? I asked Adam, first of all, Adam, I call Adam now. Adam, okay? Yes, Adam, okay. What is the most current cost data that reflect today prices? Where you can get cost data that reflect today prices? Yes, very good. Very good indeed. QS Online is the most well used by the quantity surveyor at firm and also at in academy as well. Very good. Later on, we will look at what are the cost data in QS Online. So bravo, Adam. Ayn, are you there? Ayn? Yes. Ayn, have you ever go to the hardware shop? No. You haven't? Um, is it Mr. DIY is hardware shop? <laughs> well, hardware shop is where you can buy paint, you can buy, uh, what do you call it, drills, you can buy construction materials, you know, uh, like cement and sand. Have you entered or buy anything? For example, you want to paint your hostel or you, you cannot paint your hostel you want to paint your bedroom and you go to the hardware shop and buy a tin of paint have you ever done that mm, yes yeah. yes okay so what do you think about the cost at that particular uh hardware is it current mm, current yes why is, is it current it Why is it current? Mm, I don't know. Because you pay your money at that particular point in time for what is worth, right? It reflects the market price, isn't it? Yes. So if you go to several hardware shops, you can actually compare between the different prices of Dulux paint. Do you think so? Yes, madam. True. Yes. Okay. So it reflect the market prices. Is it not? Yes? Yes. What? It reflect the current market prices. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, imagine you are a very big contractor. I'm still with you, Ayn. Imagine you are a big contractor and you want to order... Uh, a two bags of cement or maybe 50 bags of cement and you get a quotation from the supplier that is also the current market prices. market prices do you agree with me yes i agree with you yeah good all right so let me just do ida ida where are you Ida, there are two Ida. Any Ida will do. Ida? Yes. Yes, Ida. Okay, Ida. What are other cost data or sources of cost data that you can recall, that you can remember? Where you can get prices? Mm. The most easy sources of cost data that is available in any QS firm? 
Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, you can't. Because that is the bread and butter of a quantity surveying. When a quantity surveyor do estimating and also measurement, okay, they will do pricing. Okay, so where is the cost data come from to actually pick up the date, the prices for them to use for their pricing? Anyone? Very easy. Uh, government. No, when you are in firms, remember when you are in firms, you are going to estimate, um, let's say, a certain part of the building work below. Where you get your references for your cost data? Mm -hmm. Very simple. Is it Arcadis? Previous? Be more specific. Previous one. Mm -hmm. Betul, previous project, but which document? Tender document. Inside the tender document, which sections of the tender document? Detail. Which sections inside the tender document that has all the prizes? BQ. BQ. All right. Don't ever forget BQ because that is your bread and butter. You actually deal with that either. You know now the BQ is the sources of course data that you get as a references for you to do estimating or yes. pricing. Yes. All right. Don't ever forget that as a quantity survey. Never ever forget that. So Adam was saying to me just now the word previous. What do you mean by the word previous, Adam? Yes, good. Past project. So is the cost data is current? Okay. My, my answer is, is the past project cost data is current? No. Nama pun dia past projects. Okay. We call it historical cost data because it's belong to past project anything which is other than today is called past or historical cost data even yesterday become historical cost data meaning today that the price is subject to fluctuations according to the market conditions stability of politics and any other um, social environmental factors that affect the pricing. So Adam was saying that its past project is actually not current. So Adam, stay with me. Okay, now listen to me very, very carefully. So if it is not current, what you have to do with the cost data? <laughs> must get a new one so that's no point isn't it you have a cost data from previous project in front of you which is two years ago i'm sure it is no waste you can stay use it but what you need to do with the cost data for keep trying everybody for estimation yes what do you need to do? I mean, you got a cement bag, which is about 17 ringgit two years ago, and now it's already 20 ringgit. So with the 70 ringgit, you know, what are you going to do if you, you want to use it? To estimate the difference and so you can estimate the total cost for the project. Okay, all right. Okay, I, I can see that you have no knowledge yet for the time being, so I'm going to answer it on your behalf. Okay, you have to update the prices to bring it from 2020 to 2024 for example if let's say your bills of quantity dated 2020 for example the prices is only valid for the year 2020 if you are going to use it for the year 2024 how many years has already passed away about four years ago okay so you have to bring it to the 
current price. So you have to do a bit of adjustment. So what type of adjustment? We will learn later. Okay, so let me just go back to the course learning outcome once more. This is very interesting subject, by the way, because with this particular subject, you can actually estimate within the next five minutes the cost of your mother's house, for example, if you know uh, what types of data you can use, which is available inside your head or in front of you. Okay, so at the end of this particular course, you you actually be able to understand where to get the cost data and to be able to evaluate whether the cost data is current or not current. If it is not current, then you have to adjust the cost data to bring it to the present time. Yeah, as simple as that. Okay, I'm going to ask another person at this particular point. Who is it I'm going to ask just now? Anybody? Um, let me see. Um, siapa ada kat situ? Saya tak boleh nak buka. Hmm... Uh, is it Firdaus there? Is there sir, anybody by the name? Oh, Ashraf. Ashraf, are you there? Yes, madam. Yes, Ashraf. Okay, right. So we talk about cost data. We talk about adjustment of cost data. Now, listen, if you're going to actually um, estimate a, 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 a apartment, for example, you have an, an apartment, okay? And you're going to build a five-story apartment. And... The one that you use as a reference is only two-story apartments. Okay, so your reference is two-story. You are going to build a five-story apartment. Can you use this two-story apartment to use it as a basis for your estimates? Boleh ke tak boleh? Bangunan dua tingkat tapi you nak buat lima tingkat. Boleh ke tak boleh? Tak. Tak boleh. Kenapa tak boleh? Sebab Sebab apa? Sebab lain harga dia, lain dia punya Story height, is it? Yes. Yes, lain dia punya story height. Kenapa kelainan story height itu membuatkan bangunan tu berlainan? Very interesting, is it? Dua tingkat dengan tiga. Sebab uh, lima tingkat. ada lift. Sebab ada lift. Oh ada lift. Selain daripada ada lift, ada apa lagi? Kalau lima tingkat. Lepas tu material dia jumlah lain. Lain. Contohnya apa? Apa yang lain? Uh, bricks. External work dah bertambah saja ni. External wall. Ya, nah, ya. Yeah, yeah. Betul tak? Betul, betul. Foundation kena lagi besar betul? Sebab betul. lima tingkat betul? Betul. Stackers lagi banyak kan? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Right? Okay. So daripada dua tingkat nak pergi kepada lima tingkat. Well, can you use it? Yes and no. Yes and no. No because you cannot compare an apple with a pear. Okay, you must compare apple with apple. Kalau dua tingkat dengan dua tingkat. Kalau lima tingkat dengan lima tingkat. Then you you have very good basis of comparison. Okay, kalau dua tingkat nak pergi kepada lima tingkat. I said yes and no. You can still use if you don't have any a cost data whatsoever but you still have to do some adjustment okay you have to do some adjustment so later we will also see yeah at, uh, at the end of the uh, syllabus you will see that we can still use do a thing cut the support but we have to be very careful to make sure that we adjust for various factor for example peningkatan story height the loading that impose on the projects and the, the building and so on and so forth. All right. So bear in mind yeah, when we are talking so far about the cost learning outcome, you know the sources of cost data, you know whether the cost data is reliable or not, current or not, you know when to use cost data, when to adjust and more importantly, you'll be able to predict yeah, cost cost of a project which happened the year after or two years later by uh, various techniques. I'm not going to bother mentioning about you the technique yet, but there are several ways to do estimates. So we are going to actually teach you several ways to carry out estimates. We're going to also delve into the role of quantity surveyor as a cost checker, cost planner, 
yeah as a quantitative way you know, need to do uh, cost planning cost check and cost control especially when there is variations to that now that is something that I, i'm sure you will look forward to at the end of this semester so i'm going to just move on very quickly at the moment okay so um this is your clo plo the cost learning outcome and also uh, what they call it, program learning outcome. Uh, not to get worried into the, the very detail, but I want to highlight to you the points in yellow. Yeah, You need to determine the solutions on construction issue on the project through a specific reasoning, perform a range of essential methods and procedure uh, to solve a broad range of quantity swing complex problem and display leadership skills in managing construction project. Now, let's just say, for example, you need to actually, first of all, be able to use cost data to do your estimates. And in doing so, you have to justify whether what you use is actually leads to a reliable estimates or not. Now, it is very important to ask this particular uh, questions to all of you. Why do you think, as a quantity surveyor, we need to produce a reliable estimates as early as possible? Anybody? Kenapa sebagai seorang juru ukur bahan, kita kena beritahu pada peringkat awal during the project brief the cost of estimates as early as possible to our client? Kenapa agaknya? Very important. Kenapa? Yes, thank you very much. Superb, excellent. Okay, to make sure that client can raise sufficient fund to finance the projects. If the project is 2 million, client only have 1.5 million. So if you do a rough, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, preliminary estimates and it comes to 2 million, at least client have a chance to raise another uh, half a million more to undertake the project or the client can actually uh, how should I say uh, debrief yeah that means uh, adjust the brief so that it becomes you know a, a bit much more small scale to fit in the budgets okay very good but what more importantly ladies and gentlemen as a professional quantity surveyor whatever figure you quoted as the estimate during the early stage of the project is the one most remembered by the client. I repeat this again. Whatever figure you quoted as the estimates for the project at the beginning of, let's say, inceptions to the client is the amount best remembered by the client. Let's say you quoted the project to be 2 million. Could so client remember ever, 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 and forever that the project cost two million? But suddenly, along the project life cycle, the project rise due to several other factors to three million. The client will come back to you and say, "Hey, Mr. QS, Miss QS, last time you said to me it's only cost two million. How come it become three million now?" You are a professional QS. I'm relying on your professional estimates. All right? So remember, don't get caught into that situation. Client trust us because we are professional people. However crude your method of estimating, whether you don't have any information at that time of early stages, you don't have any drawing whatsoever, you don't have any uh what do you call it clear uh indication of what the building look like despite all that with your vast knowledge in estimating you have to produce a reliable estimate so that's why i i the pro, one of the project learning outcome ladies and gentlemen is for you to be able to convince us in your report later on when you do coursework that you need to recommend to us you to deal to the best uh, availability, your level best of professional judgment. What will be your recommended preliminary estimates? Yeah, we take it as being professionally 
uh, done based on your professional experience, intuitions, or your wisdom sometimes, okay? So um, I will go more. Um, this is the content of the syllabus. Um, I will not use this. I will use this lecture shadow. Uh, let me just uh, finish off, okay? Um, basically, this is what you're going to learn. Um, I'm going to use lecture shadow for this so that you see more clearly. I will do it in a minute. Okay, let me just see what's um, available in this particular slide first of all. Okay, assessment. Now, for this particular um, pro, uh, co, uh, sorry, subjects, it, it's uh, a combination of coursework and also final exam. Exam is 60%, coursework is 40%. 20, reports will be 20%, presentation will be 10%, and you have individual tests which will be put in your future or which will be done in class depending on the instructions of the lecturers towards the end of the semester. Normally it is on course target but it can vary according to the requirement of the program from time to time. Uh, it's 100% altogether, 60% exam plus 40% coursework that make up 100% and the passing rate is 50%. So what is the um, verdict so far? Well, construction economies, like any other construction economies at all level, is one of the, how should I say, trying subjects. I use the word trying because so far uh, the passing rate has not been that, uh, how should I say, um, attractive in the sense that not many people score A, but it's not impossible to get A or A minus subject that you really put your effort to revise and to do as many passive questions as possible. Uh, the rule of the game is never leave any questions in the exam empty, otherwise definitely you cannot score a very good mark, okay? It's not difficult, this subject is. Many students enjoy, especially doing the course target, but they spend so much on the calculation that they forget that essay is as important as the calculation part, okay? I include to you in your WhatsApp the example of past papers. So from now on, please have a look at it. My way of handling this particular class is like this. After at the end of each class, after I lecture one subject, we will go straight away to the past paper. We find the questions that relate to that particular topic area and we do straight away. Okay, not me doing it. You have to do it on your own time to tackle any questions while your memory is still fresh. Then towards the end of the semester, you don't have to revise that much because you do it consistently from day one. Okay. Like after today, after I finish on the course data, you go and have a look at questions um, in the past paper 2014, 2015. Find several questions on course data straight away. Attempt it. Use your notes uh, to begin with. Do it as open book for the time being because you don't have that much knowledge. And do it as, as, a, uh, as a habit because if you do it as habit, it will actually lessen your revision time later on your effort on revision time okay now i'm coming to the next slides these are essential texts yeah which is used uh, by students i'm sure that some of you already have it already do you have this particular textbook with you ladies and gentlemen do you possess any of these textbooks yes 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 yes, yes. yes. which one the the red color the, yeah, the yellow color, the problem and solution. Which one? The blue one. The blue one. Blue, blue eh? yeah. Okay. This is a book for you to invest. There are several more construction economic book by Ivo Silly, the English versions. Don't just um, use this as the sole references. Yeah. Go and find out books and references from other parts of the world, for example, from England. You have Ivo, Silly, anything on construction economy, which is related to your study, please you use it as a reference. However, okay, this book, why is it so popular among the students? Because it's actually designed according to our syllabus. The author, 
Professor Madia last time. Surveyor Khairani Ahmad is one of our ex lecturer or past uh, lecturers. And she taught this particular subject for quite a while. So because she taught this quite subject for a while, she tailor-made yeah, some of the references according to our syllabus. So it's quite easy for you to use this as a references. However, I need to caution you all, not everything in this book reflect what is happening in practice. Many people say that, Madam, when I compare what we did in practice to the one that Puan Kharani punya buku, I see some differences. Of course, because construction economic books present to you the theoretical and concept to actually engage you all in the literature's part of it, you know, and a bit of example of uh, application in practice for you to know how uh, the practice doing it, you have to actually do it yourself when you become a quantity surveyor. So it just intended to be as a guide. Nevertheless, it is a very good guide because it takes you into a very simple explanations, topic by topic, area by area. So whenever I teach, let's say cost data, please go and open this particular book and look at the cost data and read straight away. Okay. Don't proskinate. Don't leave it too far. Uh, later, I'm going to do it next week. I'm going to, to do it two weeks now. Uh, a smart student will do it immediately. Just scan through, have a look, and also draft. Okay, you need also a scientific calculator. Having said that, there is no complicated um, estimates using um, standard deviations or using... Uh, uh, Pengkebedaan atau pengkamela. No, nothing like that. Yeah, Not even trigonometry for that reasons. We are going to just use simple arithmetic in our estimates. Yeah? Plus, minus, you know, um, divisions, that kind of thing. Nothing so complex. But if you forget your calculator in exam, then you are in trouble. Uh, you cannot use your um, uh, handset calculator uh, you can't all right so you need to have this uh, for the time being as i said don't limit yourself to this particular textbook your future is a platform for you to actually look at because in your future sometimes uh, we actually provide for example um objective tests if there is any as i said it depends on the lecture sometimes the lecturer or resource person will put some information in the new future so from to time from time to time uh please have a look at you future uh, even though we use it or we don't use it but it's there for you um in, in your itm you future is a system that we use as a formal platform yeah of learning now this year is quite interesting odl and face to face um office to face is better a lot better of course because i can actually go around and i can strangle each one of you you know if you answer me wrong yeah i'll probably will slowly come at your back and get your neck and strangle you to death you know kidding okay i'll kill you then and then okay but uh, kidding okay but uh, the idea of face-to-face -face is that you can participate more in class. However, I do like the online as well. For From time to time, I do like the online because it can facilitate me using a lot of information online, yeah, which I cannot use during face-to-face -face because of our overhead projector. In campus C, it's very, very poor, as you know already. Google Meet is our official platform, but if there is a professional talk, because we do invite a guest speaker to talk from time to time, resource person or the coordinator, uh, Dr. Anis uh, Sazira, will invite a professional uh, persons to actually take part and give you um, some idea about the practice of estimating. So we are using their bags, yeah, and, and for, as a, 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 a delivery platform all right reminder for all the students to enter your entrance survey and exit survey towards the end reminder to all students also not to uh, about academic integrity i have to caution all of you i'm sure um, all of you are aware about chat gpt about so many i artificial intelligence just now i have to be very very careful to tell all of you 
do not do not use chat gpt wholly in your answer i use the word wholly in your answer um because um it's not you that doing the work but it's it's the chat gpt or ai that doing the work at the end of the day you only know how to do cut and paste but do not know how to attempt the question so perhaps what we would like for you is to present your answer in the form of presentation at that time no chat gpt will help you out yeah and we don't allow artificial intelligence to take over the uh, presentation because i do know some students replace uh, their face uh, their well-being with artificial intelligent um, person which uh, or entity which um, we don't tolerate so we might either ask you to redo again or we will ask you to actually um uh, what do you call it or we give you a very poor mark okay i did mention about this eh? Uh, aku lebih menghargai orang yang beradab daripada orang yang berilmu Kalau hanya berilmu, iblis pun lebih tinggi ilmunya daripada manusia I mean, what such a very nice quote from Sheikh Abdul Hadi Al-Jalani One of the most res respectable ilmuwan Ya, yeah, adab datang dahulu baru ilmu Ilmu datang dahulu, ya yeah, Barulah, uh, what do you call it, uh, amal Amal datang dahulu, barulah datangnya Ya, yeah, uh, berkat ya yeah, dan um, segala-galanya kembali kepada niat okay so i say this and i say this again and again to all of you uh, i've been teaching for nearly 37 years without fail without fail i keep on mentioning to the students and again and again tolonglah perbaiki niat ikhlaskan ya yeah, belajar sebab pada saya ya yeah, pada saya lah selama 37 tahun saya berkhidmat ya yeah, tidak ada satu hari pun yang mana saya merasakan saya mengajar tu sia-sia Ya, kita mengajar ni sebab apa? Kita nak bagi ilmu sebaik mungkin. Ya, sebab itu kalau kita mengajar kita kena bersungguh-sungguh bagi ilmu kepada anak didik kita. Insya-Allah mana tahu satu hari nanti itu juga menjadi penyelamat kita di hari akan datang. Wallahu alam. Okay. Alright. So this is a lecture schedule. Can you see the lecture schedule? Ladies and gentlemen, can you see this? Yes. 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 Very good. Okay. I'm not going to go through the course descriptions because we did that. We talk about course learning outcomes. We talk about teaching methods. We have also formal teaching. What We have invited guests. The invited guests fall under collaborative teaching. We also have presentation. We also have tutorial. I love to do tutorial with the students because that is the time when the student use their thinking skills okay but from time to time my lecture will always be two-way communications yeah i will always ask so far alhamdulillah all of you responded very well so uh give yourself a pat at your back because you did so well now keep on continuing that spirit with me always always remember i will laugh at you if you get it wrong i will laugh at you if you have a broken english i don't really care this is all where we started okay i was once a poor student in english once upon a time it's only a, a because of environment a practice that make me to where i am at the moment so you have to start now okay the lecture schedule is um what I call it, show the breakdowns according to weeks. So the first three weeks is online, ladies and gentlemen. On week three, we will issue you assignment, group assignment. From now on, I want you to have a look at your classmate and choose about four to five people in a group, depending on the assignment requirement by the RP, resource person. But today, we are going to look at course data only in a nutshell. I won't go into detail for today. But I will give you in a nutshell just a preview of what you're going to learn next week. Okay, it's very impossible to cover everything in just about one hour or so. All right, then we will continue next week. Um, I will ask you by the end of this particular uh, lecture for you to estimate the cost of your mother's house. Yeah, that will be interesting for you to do. By the end of today, let's see whether you can produce something that your, even your mother can be proud of, okay? Right, then we talk about cost data and how to predict the price level. Um, it's very interesting that if you want to do cost data updating or you want to do, for example, adjustment of cost data, you have to use indices, all right? I'm not going to actually explain to you at the moment, but 
basically, basically, when we want to measure changes of prices from one point in time to another point in time in the future, we use indices. It doesn't matter if you want to calculate the in uh, the changes of material or the changes of populations or the changes of, for example, uh, products. As long as you want to measure the changes of the prices at one particular point in time, let's say in 2020 to 2026, you have to use indices. All right? Indices is being published um, and recorded. You can have a copy online. You can get it from companies. You can actually even uh, construct your own indices. But in Malaysia for construction industry, we have CIDB stroke BCISM yeah, that have came up with a documented uh, tender price indices, building cost indices, material indices. We also have JKR that produce their own TPI. All right. Interestingly, you can have indices published in the certain publications, like for example, uh, JUBM Archidise, okay, construction cost data, and in some other documentation. So indices, you can get it online in the published materials, or it can also be in the newspaper press. I once saw the newspaper actually produce index um, figure for various type of category of buildings, okay? Now, location index is another indices that you might be interested in, okay? Um, somebody with a name, um, I cannot see your name in front of me. Assistant class rep, are you there? Yes. Siapa nama tadi? Rupa? Sabrina. Sabrina. What a nice name. Sabrina. Sabrina. Okay. All right. Your mother's house. Where is it, Sabrina? It's down at Joho. Joho. Okay. Now, your mother's house, Um, how many story is your mother's house? Is it two, two story high? Two story high. Can you can you describe to me what's your mother's house look like? Two story. How many bedroom? Um, four bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, a terrace house. Mm -hmm. Um, like it, um, lot, and lot house. And lot house. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many bathroom? Oh, um, after renovation or originally the house? After renovation. Um, five bathrooms. Wow! <laughs> Every each of the room have their own personal bathroom, so we oh, don't so have oh, wow. to share. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so lucky of you. You don't have problem mm -hmm. chewing in front of one single bathroom. Yeah. All right. How many brothers and sisters you have? I have six. Uh, uh three brothers, two sisters, which is all of them are uh, all of us are six. So everybody can have their own private bathroom. <laughs> no <laughs> need to actually ketuk lama-lama and say, hey, bila nak siap ni? You nak <laughs> like wow, lucky. Okay, all right. Do you have a swimming pool, Sabrina? Oh, I don't have a swimming pool. <laughs> I just wonder whether you have a swimming pool. Okay, all right. So Sabrina, your house is about two-story, uh, it's two-story house located. Which part of Johor? Uh, Segamai. Segama, yeah? Okay, let me just um, provide the brief, your project brief. It's a uh, one, two, a terrace house and lock. Okay. Mm -hmm. One guest room, one kitchen. Do you have a dry kitchen, wet kitchen? Mm. No. No? Just one kitchen? Just Five bathroom? Ah, uh, yeah. Family area? Okay. Okay, what else you have? You have a corridor? You have a balcony? balcony. You have a balcony. Okay, all right, good. Okay, let's see. Wahas Mawati is interested to build the same house like you. I mean, I love to have my house with five bathrooms, even though I just have one son, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So if, let's say, I want to build your a look alike, a similar building to your mother's house in Johor, in Sha'alam. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Exactly the same. The same spec 
the same story high, the same store, terrace house, the same, for example, end lot, that kind of thing. What do I have to do beside, you know, pujuk mak you bagi I your drawing? What do I have to do? Um, um, maybe uh, you can... Hmm. Create um design like um drawing mm -hmm. just like my house mm -hmm. um, identical uh, drawing isn't it identical yes, drawing identical drawing similar drawing all right yes similar drawing yes um mm -hmm. so we using the IP right now maybe in Revit or any kind of design design um software. Uh -huh. Um. Then, what else? Mm, oh, okay. Maybe oh, oh. He, he can compare the price. Uh -huh. But um, it's What's not the difference price. between Johor and Sha'alam. But what do you think? Which one should be Very more nice. higher? Houses in Johor or houses in Sha'alam? Of course, uh, houses in Sha'alam because this urban site, right? Urban, yes. urban area. Very good. Uh, compared to the Sagamai, uh, sub urban, but Sha'alam mm -hmm. is urban area. So, so obviously the cost is more higher than here. Yeah. So maybe the land, the land price is um, expensive. Higher? Higher yep. than this yes. Sagamai. Yes. So I will expect that if your mother's house is about 700, or is it 500, let's say 500,000, Yes. Okay, if you were to build the same house, it might cost 700,000 here. Would you agree with me? I'm not agree with you. Since I know the current price house, maybe about this 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 time, uh -huh. maybe about um 1 million. Really? Can wow. Is that because... how much you want to spend for renovating your house? <laughs> <laughs> then I I will forget building one. Then I don't have the money to build a one million house in. Shalom. Yes, I do. I have brother Shalom. Yeah. Uh, he also wants to uh see the house that that he can he can uh do do lah. Mm -hmm. And then uh um he find very exact with my mother's house because yeah his yeah. son can, and then uh. Uh, she, he just shared to us that uh, the current price is very high. Because How high my, is high? Sorry? How high is high? Um, about um, humpy, which is um, humpy approximately. Ah, uh, yeah, to one million. One million. About hundred. A thousand to nine hundred thousands, not the not one million, not one, exactly nine hundred thousands. Okay, uh, it comes to um, oh my god, that's me. If I want to build a similar house like your mom here, it's nine hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Wow! So, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm, we are trying to say that if the location play a major role in price differences, isn't it? Betul tak? Is that what we're saying just now, right? Okay. Yes. So what we need to do when we want to actually bring, yeah, the houses in Johor to Sha'alam, we have to do adjustment because there is a location difference. You are very true and right to say that Sha'alam is much more expensive. But there is a way to update the prices to bring Johor punya prices yeah to Sha'alam punya prices using the location index okay so location indices from for Sha'alam area uh, belong to Selangor zone is much more higher than it is Johor what Sabrina said just now is very very true the same houses might cost 300,000 less in Johor compared to Sha'alam due to the location difference okay so adjust for the location difference you have to use location index all right 
Okay, we will use an example of that uh, next week or so to illustrate our point, all right? So, the week four, we will look at elemental cost analysis. Now, here I'm going to use a very simple example of what is elemental cost analysis, okay? I'm just going to actually use this example. I always say to the students, yeah, if you want to learn, you have to learn in a very simple way. So what do I mean by elemental cost analysis? What you learn, what you will learn uh, about elemental cost analysis, okay? Basically, elemental cost analysis is a form of a cost plan cost plan okay now the word cost plan is so easy but it can be very difficult to understand if you don't understand the basic okay the basic so this is e for elemental c for cost a for analysis so what does it mean it means it is a cost plan which is break down into various element and each of the element of the building will be attributed a cost to the element so that the element can represent yeah the estimate for each and every element of work which is functional element yeah i'm talking about functional elements of the, the building okay before I go in any any um, detail, okay, let me just give you an example of what do I mean by element. Uh, the first element that I'm going to put here is substructure. Okay, so this is one element, substructure. Okay, so everybody know it's substructure? Everybody know it's substructure? Okay, what is example? of substructure we don't call it foundation we call it what work what first law level okay selain daripada itu apa bawah substructure basement lagi piling piling very good piling yeah, basement and whatnot, okay? Let's just say up to two. Okay, after after substructure, what do you have? Alim, superstructure, very good, superstructure. So, let's just provide superstructure. Maybe I wrongly spelled, doesn't matter, okay? So, what is example of superstructure? Frame. Mm -hmm. Superstructure. Wall, lagi? External wall, lagi? Lagi? Frame. Upper slab. Okay. Floor. External wall, is it? Yeah, etc, etc. Okay. After superstructure, we have external work. After external work, ada lah. Is it is it done? Okay. We add preliminaries and everything, contingencies and everything to that. Okay, but it's not part of element. But I'm going to talk about element. So I understand you know what is substructure. What is the word element? So element are those part of the building that perform the function. For example, substructure, whether it is substructure of a housing complex or whether it is for shopping complex, shopping mall, is always play the same functions. That is to actually carry the load. Yeah, there are types, all types of loads. For example, there is life load. There is also dead load. Okay, that you impose on a structure so the uh, the substructure will try to carry or withstand all the load and pass it to the uh, uh, uh ground for example okay it, it plays the same thing that's what element is about that parts of a uh, building that play the same functions regardless of whatever the building tak kisah hotel ke uh, asrama ke whatever the function of substructure is still the very same okay Sama juga dengan superstructure ya. The function is sama sahaja. Apa juga bangunan yang you uh, 
mainkan. Okay, so you akan belajar tentang elemental cost analysis. You will probably say, apa tu ya? Elemental cost analysis ataupun cost plan. So if let's say, saya buat satu, uh, for example, a table. Okay, this is a table. Alright. So saya kata elemen kat sini dan saya kata RM. Okay. So elemen yang pertama adalah superstructure. Superstructure. Dan di bawah superstructure adalah work below lowest floor level. Okay. So katakanlah projek tersebut adalah RM200,000. Tenang saja. Kita ambil mudah. Kita ambil RM200,000. Faham? RM200,000. Projek tersebut bajet dia RM200,000. Uh, this is tak logik tapi tak apa. For the sake of argument, kita ambil nombor yang senang. Okay. Daripada RM200,000, elemen superstructure dah RM50,000 kat situ. Okay. Lepas tu you have such a very big wording, isn't it? Let me just go back and adjust uh, those. Oh, 72. No wonder. Saya takut you all tak nampak. So, okay. Let me just go. Okay. Alright. So, piling dah berapa? Okay. Let's say frame. Frame pula. Oh, besar lagi tak apa. It's okay. Frame pula katalah uh, another 40,000. Okay. Alright. Now, daripada cost RM20,000 tersebut, alright, dia punya cost of superstructure dah RM50,000, frame dia RM40,000, okay, katakanlah external wall dia, sorry ya, yeah, external wall dia, doesn't matter ya, yeah, it's just in the forms of illustration, let's say another RM20,000, okay, etc, etc, alright. External work dia, etc, etc. When you campur semua elemen sampailah ke external work, alright, you will notice that um, the cost overall, a bit pardon ya, the cost overall is about, uh, what do you call it, 200,000. I'm trying to condense this a little bit so that you can see. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to condense this so that you have a very um, a small, uh, just go back to Okay, okay, alright. So, setiap elemen tersebut ada dia punya cost. Superstructure 50,000, frame 40,000, 40, external wall 20,000. So, at the end of the day, kalau campur semua elemen daripada awal hingga akhir, the total budget of a client is yeah, 200. Okay, 200,000. Okay. Semua sekali. Superstructure, campur frame, campur external wall, campur roofing, campur external work, blah blah blah. Dia jadi 200,000. Yeah? 200. Let me just get this thing correct. Okay. 200,000. Alright. So what you are actually doing ladies and gentlemen, you are the budget 200,000 for the house. Yeah? Sekarang 200,000 tak boleh buat rumah pun. Tapi tak apa. Tetapi what you do now, you apportion. The word is you apportion. Yeah? You apportion. You break down the 200,000 into the various element. Okay? That means you put a plan. Kalau superstructure, cost dia 500,000. Kalau frame, 40,000 dah pergi kepada frame. Kalau external wall, 200,000 pergi kepada 200,000. Uh, pergi pada external wall. What you do is you provide a proper breakdown or apportion the cost according to element. This is what we call a cost plan. Okay, this is what we call a cost plan. Okay, then you provide this at a very early stage sebelum you proceed with membina bangunan. Kita kena ada plan terlebih dahulu sebelum kita bina sesebuah bangunan. Okay, Sebaik kita tahu untuk superstructure-nya kita nak letak berapa bajet. For frame ni kita nak letak berapa bajet. For external wall ni kita nak letak bajet. Bila kita campur semua sekali, dia make up tak 200,000. Hopefully dia make up. Okay because kita kena ingat kita ada bajet, a very limited bajet or resources sebanyak 200,000. 
No, ada setengah orang tanya kat saya, Prof, macam mana kita nak faham cost plan dalam bentuk yang paling paling mudah? Okay, bentuk yang paling mudah adalah macam ni. You punya mak. Okay, I always use perkataan mak you. Mak you bagi you seratus ringgit. 100 RM. Mak you suruh you pergi pasar. Okay, pergi pasar beli makanan basah untuk you gunakan masak berbuka puasa. So mak you bagi seratus ringgit. So mak you kata, okay, tolong beli mak ayam. Tolong beli mak sayur. Tolong beli mak, for example, daging. Tolong beli mak, katakanlah, telur. Contoh dia. Okay. So this is the shopping list. Okay. Mak you bagi you seratus ringgit. Okay. First of all, you plan dahulu. Okay. Ayam berapa agaknya seekor ayam? Katakanlah ayam, katakanlah tiga puluh ringgit. Dia sayur sekarang pun dah makin mahal, dua puluh ringgit. Okay. Daging katakanlah sangat mahal sekarang ya. Daging sekilo dekat enam puluh ringgit. Enam puluh ringgit tak mahal sangat tu ya. Maybe empat uh, puluh uh, ringgit. Okay. And then telur sepuluh ringgit satu papan. Alright. So ini what you do is you buat a uh, you punya shopping list. Your shopping list ladies and gentlemen is your cost plan. This is like your planning. You plan. Dengan seratus ringgit. Hmm, I nak beli ayam RM30, sayur RM20, daging RM40, telur RM10. So, semua sekali adalah berapa ringgit? RM100. According to the budget yang mak you pergi. Okay? So, this why you buat plan. This is your plan. This is your plan. Then, you pergi pasar. Bila you pergi pasar, you tengok Allahu Akbar Ayam ya Dia dah Naik harga Kepada RM35 Berlakunya variation In prices Ajak you RM30 Sekarang ayam dah RM30 Ya Daging Dah naik dah Kepada RM50 Ataupun katakanlah naik daging naik RM45. Ya? Tadi masa plan elok je you plan. You nak beli banyak ni macam ni. Tapi bila you pergi pasar, you check harga barang, harga barang dah meningkat naik. Okay? So the process of checking harga barang, kita panggil cost check. Di awal tadi when you do the planning, you do a cost plan. When you actually go and to the pasar and tengok harga barang, you do checking. Okay, that is cost check. So harga barang RM35 dah naik harga ayam, ya, yeah, daging dah naik RM45. Kat situ sahaja dah RM4,5,6,7, RM80. RM80. Bajet you tetap ada RM100. So macam mana nak buat ladies and gentlemen kalau mak you bagi duit banyak ni? Macam mana nak buat? You bajet yang tu kena kurangkan. Macam mana nak kurangkan tu tu? Cuba ajar kat saya sikit macam mana nak kurangkan tu. <laughs> Ada kawan jual seketul? Ada. Ada ke kat pasar jual seketul? Minta-minta uh, telur ayam seketul? Ada ke? Malu saya nak pergi pasar. Tak ada. Ini saya tak pernah pergi pasar ni. Pernah ada lah benda. Ya ke? Kedai rincik. Kedai rincik ada. Ah, oh you cakap oh saya nak beli telur seketul. Ada ke? Ya Allah bahasa Malaysia you all. Sebijik lah kot. Ha? Oh Allah. <laughs> ketul. Ha, berapa ketul eh? Ada you all pernah beli telur dua biji? Sebijik? Ada saya pernah. Oh Masya Allah. Masya Allah. Masya Allah. Okay, alright. Saya segan nak beli telur sebiji. Sebab apa saya takut nanti orang kata, eh sebiji je beli. Alah, rasa tak, macam tak sanggup nak face tu. Nak face kenyataan itu. Okay, oh betul lah. Oh, saya fahamlah hidup seorang pelajar kan. Uh, saya dulu macam you all jugalah. Tapi tak adalah pergi beli telur sebiji. Saya beli carrot satu, satu, satu apa? Satu biji carrot pernah. Telur sebiji saya tak pernah. 
Sebab nanti nak tambah kat sahur pula Ay, Tak cukup okay so hari ni paling-paling kurang Saya beli um, 5 biji ataupun 10 biji Okay alright so what you need to do Apa kawan-kawan you kata You kena slash the other budget Sebab duit resources yang you ada Hanyalah RM100 So you kena revise So katakanlah uh, uh, Sayur you kena kurangkan sikit Daripada ambil berbahcam macam sayur Ya yeah, RM70, RM5, RM80 uh, Sayur you beli RM10 kalau saya peminat telur, saya tak masih beli telur sepuluh ringgit juga. So saya peminat telur, okay? So it will bring you back to one hundred ringgit. So bila you kurangkan harga sayur daripada dua puluh ringgit kepada sepuluh ringgit, telur daripada sepuluh ringgit, uh, apa tu? Uh, katakanlah you, you kurangkan fifteen lah. Saya kata kat sini telur tadi kawan yang ambil fifteen ringgit. Telur you jadikan lima ringgit, for example, okay? Dua puluh ringgit. The total is still Hundred ringgit, but what you do here, you cut a little bit your budget so that uh, the 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 total budget doesn't rise to more than hundred ringgit. So the process of cutting the budget and then considering is called cost control. Itu yang dipanggil cost control. So konsep cost control, cost plan, cost check and cost control ni merupakan kerja QS tau. QS adalah yang buat cost plan. QS adalah yang uh, cost check, check whether it's exceeding the original uh, uh, allocation or not. Dan bila dia exceeding, QS kena ambil action to control, to bring back to the original budget. Okay, so itulah dia masukkan dengan pro, uh, apa tu, cost plan, cost uh, check and cost control. Dan letak pasal shopping ayam, sayur and daging ni dalam construction, sama lah juga. Dalam construction tadi kita kata kita nak ada 200,000 budget bangunan Ya 50,000 dah letak kat superstructure Frame dah 40,000 External wall dah 20,000 Yang lain tu kena sikit-sikit barulah total dia 200,000 200, Tetapi bila kita ada banyak sangat penambahan Bila you dapat working drawing ingat bila you buat cost plan ni Sebelum you ada working drawing Bila you dah buat working drawing you tambah yang ini you Uh, uh, cuba perkemaskan yang ini You akan dapati bahawa superstructure dah naik Bila you pergi buat Site investigation you tengok alamak Kena tambah lagi piling that kind of thing Jadi dia lain daripada Apa yang you untukkan dalam Cost plan. Bila you do cost checking Dia adalah agak lain Daripada cost uh, cost plan Yang asal. Di situlah Kalau you nak tambah juga, you kena potong elemen-elemen yang lain. Ha, daripada guna finishes, gunakan marble finishes yang mahal, you tukarkan daripada marble kepada apa? Kepada tiles. Ya, daripada guna, for example, uh, 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 clay brick, you tukarkan kepada cement and sand brick supaya dia boleh potong sikit harga bangunan. Uh, so far you fully faham tak apa yang dimaksudkan dengan cost plan, cost check and also cost control boleh faham? Okay. Saya rasa ini yang paling mudah yang you boleh ingat kalau let's time, kalau orang tanya you okay macam mana kita nak buat Uh, benda ni semua, you just say uh, you use this particular technique. Okay, I'm sorry. I will go back to what I've just said covered before. So this is what you're going to learn. Basically, during the elemental cost analysis, you will learn how to apportion the cost or the budgets into several important elements yeah, in a building. Like the substructure, superstructure, external work. Alright? And then from there, you can see Bangunan mana ataupun bahagian elemen yang mana yang paling banyak kos dia. Okay, let me just get you an example. Semua orang tahu tak bangunan Sydney Opera House? Sydney Opera House in Australia? Tahu. Oh. Tahu kan? Okay, kalau you tengok bangunan tersebut, bahagian elemen yang paling mana yang paling banyak sekali kos? Roofing. Mm -hmm. Roofing isn't it? Roofing and also facade. Okay so bila you buat breakdown of elemental cost for bangunan Sydney Opera House sebahagian besar daripada budget akan pergi kepada item roofing. Kalau you work below dia 20,000 yang tu 10,000 mungkin roofing 200,000 on roofing alone. 
So that explain the element tu yang paling orang panggil cost significant. Dia tak panggil cost paling mahal tau. Dia panggil cost significant item. Cost yang paling signifikan. Kalau kita tengok lembaga tabung haji, bangunan yang lembaga tabung haji ataupun menara gading, kita boleh tengok tak antara elemen-elemen bangunan tersebut yang mana elemen yang paling banyak sekali bajet letak kat situ. Okay? Alright. Then uh, once we understand macam mana kita nak apportion the building according to the element, then we can start doing the estimates. Okay, dia ada macam-macam cara kita nak buat estimates. Estimate di peringkat awal di mana tidak ada sebarang drawing ada lagi pada masa tersebut and also estimates towards the later parts when you have a complete working drawing or where you have a computerized systems whereby you can do financial methods. You can use um, what you call it other big data to forecast your estimates so on and so forth. All right. Now, um, we will go into any details towards the later parts when Dr. Anis take you on board. Uh, she will go into cost planning, cost checking, cost control and also uh, variations, claims and variation, especially for public projects. All right. So that will complete your study up to 40 weeks. I think it, it should be very interesting subjects for you to learn. Now, the last 10 minutes, I'm not going to use it until three hours. Um, I'm, I'm going to let you to do the work now. Less of me speaking, more of you doing. So I'm going to actually um, go to the next one, okay, which is um, look at your notes, okay, for this particular week. Now, the notes that I'm using here is different from the notes that I give it to you. I will share to you uh, this particular notes a bit later. The reason why I use this emerald green color slides is because this is one particular um, lecture notes that comprises all the combinations of all chapters. So for the purpose of showing to you, it's very easy for me to actually use this particular slides because I can see the very front of the lecture till the very end of the lecture using this particular one PowerPoint slides. Okay, right. Let us just, just about 10 minutes or so, let's look into cost data. All right, let's look at cost data. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every one of it this week, but I'm going to actually introduce you um, some of the important elements of cost data, sources of cost data. Later, we will see from the internet where you can get the cost data available. Then after you see the, 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 the sources of cost data, I'm going to ask you to estimate your own mother's house. Okay, your own mother's house. That will be your task for today. So orang by the end of today must be able to estimate your own mother's house. Tak kisahlah itu rumah papan ke, rumah kayu ke, rumah apartment ke, whatever it is. But at least I want you to come up with the most current estimate of your mom's house. All right. So before we go into any detail, right, let me just go to you with introductions of cost data first of all. What do we mean by cost data? All right. Let me just put it onto a slide. Okay. What do you mean by cost data? Basically, yeah, cost data, yeah, is the collections, analysis, publishings of cost informations in documented um, uh, reports, or it could be available online. Yeah, you can use all the collections of cost data, which is compiled, yeah, either available in the newspaper the magazine, the cost, uh, cost book, or whether it is available online, or whether it is available at your own firm. So basically, the cost data have various different uses at various different stages of the projects. During the early stages of the projects, you must remember you have to come up with the proposed budgets. So you need a very quick uh, and reliable cost data at a very early stage because there's no information, no detail about the projects. 
towards the later parts of the projects as you become you have a complete working drawing then you actually need to um, obtain a much more um uh, how should i say uh cost data in a very uh, elaborate nature using uh, cost data from the um bills of quantities or anything related to that or you you can build up unit rates for your own cost data which is not available in any of the reference materials okay so most qs firm as i say rism jkr departments of statistics malaysia cidb uh, or portal uh, various portal have a good compilations of cost data now we will show some of the cost data later on now why you actually or when you going to use the cost data i say this again and again you use cost data at a very early stage you can use the cost data uh, again uh, for your preliminary design stage during your detailed de design stage whereby you need to come up with the taking off and um tender documentation uh descriptions and pricing as well and towards the construction stage whereby you need to actually calculate the interim payment and final accounts okay now jkr actually uh, compile various cost data um in their own um uh, portal and is available uh, hard copy as well if you go to jkr they have a publication in terms of hard copy uh, don't worry about the terminology for the time being okay rsm uh, royal institutions of service malaysia uh, last time they have building cost information center in 1980s and 1990s yeah at that particular time i was one of the researcher for bcic compiling the cost data uh we publish the cost data every a quarter but nowadays is already a matter of history we do not longer have bcic but now we have um, bcism not uh, available in rsm but there is a building next to rsm adjacent uh, property uh, on the same building with rsm called the BCISM and it's very good to tell all of you is that most of the students who work in BCISM are students who actually study construction economy in my class. One of them is Yusuf Khalid and he is studying uh, cost, uh, construction economy in my class. Now he become a very important person in BCISM. So if you have any problem getting the cost data, you can go to your seniors, okay? CIDB my entries um we will look at that a bit later on okay these are some of the examples i'm going to be very quick at the moment because i want to actually show to you what's available in the portal now um i will open each and every one of these later on but i will just give you a glance of the sources of cost data that you can get from jubim Archives, uh, 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 what do you call it from the JKR, yeah, departments of statistics, yeah, etc. etc. Let me just open what I just collect before I come to class just now. Let me just share with you, okay, some of the cost data that I just collected. I wouldn't say on the way to class, but I would say just before I came to the class. Hang on, uh, all right. I collected a series of course data which is available online. All right. So, all right. So that is very quick for me to actually see that. All right. So this one just now I show to you. Malaysian um, 2022 construction cost handbook by JUBM Academies. You have now 2023, but this one is online, available online. You can get 2023, uh, a complimentary copy from Academies, um, uh, no problems. And inside this Academies, you can see construction cost data for Kuala Lumpur, for Johor Bahru, for Penang, for Kota Kinabalu, for Kuching, yeah, selected Asian countries. Major rates in Malaysia, okay, MNE cost for selected 
ancient cities, and so on and so forth. You will also have compilations of indices, Tender Price Index, JUB, JUBM, BWCTPI. What is BWCTPI? Eh? CTPI means Composite Tender Price Index because academics they like to combine their Composite Tender Price Index, um, a reflections of the true cross index, uh, which combines a bit of cost uh, indices and also tender indices. Okay. Um, we also have average unit prices. You, you also have uh, information on the current property prices. Yeah. And so many other data. Let me just scroll this. I want you to download on your own. Yeah, I, I want to share this because I want you to download on your own. Okay, these are the projects. Yeah, JUBM is one of the biggest um, uh, QS companies in Malaysia and they joint venture with Akadise. At the moment, Akadise is already, um, uh, how should I say, uh, dismantling its units um, and leave it into JUBM group. They call JUBM group now. These are some of the big projects that you know that JUBM did, yeah, Legoland, yeah, you notice some of them, yeah, education, transportation, you know, they have done so many projects because they have existed for a very long time at the moment. All right, now what I want you to have a look, they actually produce some specifications of a typical building types of projects, yeah. Construction cost data, they show you the cost strength of the prices of various types of building. Tadi kawan you kata mak dia, yeah, ada terrace houses in Johor. Can you see or not? The prices rises from 2011, 2021. Kalau you tengok ya, kita ambil yang warna pink, ya, terrace houses. Ya, dahulu seribu ringgit. Malaysia ringgit per meter square tetapi pada tahun 2021 dah meningkat hampir kepada 1,500 ringgit per meter square. Alright. So, harga telah meningkat. Tengok yang warna merah, luxury apartment pada tahun 2011, 2011 is only 300 thousand per meter square. Look at in 2021. Wow, the price increase is almost yeah, three quarter, 4,500 ringgit Malaysia per meter square. Wow. You can see how much prices and in commercial building even stated yeah, prestige offices even rise a very sharp increase over the years. Okay. Industrial building to nothing actually. That's what they say that if you want to invest your money, please invest in your assets in the forms of building or land, even gold for that matter because the price increase from time to time. Okay, all right. Can I just, can I do this? Ah, better. All right. So this is what I want you to do by the end of today. All right. I want you to estimate your own mother's house, all right, using this particular data, all right, using this particular data. If your mother's house is a single unit or detached houses or a terrace houses, okay, as long as you know how many meters square is your mother's house, you can actually estimates using this particular single cost data. So what I want you to do, your homework for next week is to measure your mother's house in meter square, all right, to find the cost per meter square and to times the area with the cost per meter square. All right. Now bear in mind, this is 2022. Now it's 2024. 
So the prices got to be a lot higher than the one in this table. Okay, I give you an example. Sabrina, are you there? Yes. Your, you said that your mother's house is a terrace yes. house. Uh, yes. Betul? Okay, what is the cost per meter square for terrace houses in this particular uh, table? Cuba tengok. Ambil yang total tu, berapa? Okay, okay. Terrace house one. Uh, the left one is or the right one? 960. Uh, 960. Hingga? Hingga 1570. Okay. Itu adalah range dia. Rumah Sabrina tadi, ya, yeah, range dia sebab dia terrace houses, range dia 600, 960 hingga 1570. Faham? That's the range. Okay. Kalau rumah you, apartment, ataupun you have a low cost housing, berapa harga dia low cost housing, Sabrina? Low cost housing? Hmm. 580 until 715. Right. Rumah Prisma, Prima, whatever you want to call it. Rumah uh, rumah kos murah, for example, around 550 per meter square to 750. Okay. Let me just go back again. Okay. Three star hotel. Uh, 4,300. Then until 6,370. Right. Five star? 8,250 until 11,110. Okay. Now, let's go back to the terrace houses, your mother's house. Okay. Let's just pick up the figure for the sake of argument. Because your mother's house is a terrace house that has five bedrooms. Okay. Very luxurious indeed. I'm going to use the higher end figure, 1570. 1570. Okay. Ringgit Malaysia per meter square. Ringgit Malaysia per meter square. All right. So what Sabrina need to do between now and next week is to roughly estimate what is the gross floor area for your mother's house. Can you do that? You, you you now at your house, isn't it? Betul? Yes. Yes, Bunda. Okay, good. So, macam mana kita nak estimate meter square? Ada setengah orang menggunakan langkah kaki. Satu langkah kaki, satu meter square. Betul tak? Berapa langkah kaki, berapa meter square? Itu cara yang paling senang. Kita ukur berapa, berapa langkah kaki. Daripada hujung rumah ke hujung rumah, berapa langkah kaki kita. Tapi langkah kaki kita mestilah sebesar satu meter square. You see what I'm trying to say to you not? Yes, Brenda. Dia tak payah tepat. Ya, kita kita nama pun estimates, okay? So, saya nak you kira, ya, berapakah gross floor area for your mother's house. Rumah you saja, tak payah rumah jiran. Okay? Rumah, ya, tak termasuk external work whatsoever. Okay, kira. Dan decide berapakah cost per meter square. You can use this one. Tetapi ingat, Harga ni pada tahun 2022. Okey. Buat masa ni guna harga 2022 terlebih dahulu. Is it alright? Okey, Bunda. Okey. Nanti minggu depan kita belajar macam mana kita nak bawa apa yang you all kira tu kepada harga semasa 2024. So, are you clear about your work for this week? What you have to do? Repeat after me. Tadi hmm? orang. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Right. Alright. As simple as that for the time being. Boleh ya? Nanti kita belajar sikit-sikit. Saya suka belajar sikit-sikit. Nanti saya ajar, okay, tapi tu 2022. Jom kita abrogatekan dia kepada 2024. Tapi rumah dia satu tingkat. Jom kita jadikan dia dua tingkat. Macam mana kita nak buat? Tapi rumah dia dekat kawasan uh, luar bandar. Saya nak buat kat, kat dalam bandar. Jom kita upgrade sikit kepada dalam bandar. Eh, tapi rumah Mak Sabrina dia guna tiles. Tiles biasa. Saya nak buat kapet. Jom kita upgrade sikit kepada kapet punya specifications. Okay. To reflect the true cost of the building that uh, what do you call it, satisfy the new proposal of the project brief. Alright. So that is as simple as your course. I hope everybody clear. So siapa yang tak bawa uh, dia punya sebab the best thing is that you kat rumah masing-masing so you can measure your own mother's house. Yeah and you can tell me and then nanti kita tengok rumah siapa yang paling mahal sekali. Hui saya dah agak dah siapa rumah paling mahal ni kat sini ni. Yeah kalau ada swimming pool cakaplah ada swimming pool. Yeah? Kalau ada tak ada swimming pool Uh, kalau rumah you kecil, kita buat cara kecil ya. Just nanti, kalau tak rasa tak nak, tak nak guna rumah mak, mak you, guna rumah mak saudara you, guna rumah nenek you. It doesn't have to be your mother but as long as rumah, um, you know, saudara mara ke rumah yang uh, yang you boleh measure gross block area. Tak payah ambil rumah orang lain yang you tak tahu siapa apa duduk dia sebab nanti you tak boleh menjawab apa yang ada kat dalam rumah tu dan sebagainya. So, actually, okay, let's just go here. This is one of the sources of cost data in Akadise. It shows you, you can go around and see ya, harga-harga di setiap negara, di US, yeah, sorry US right dah, the Asian countries, you know, and then you can go into various detail. I'm, I'm going to just um, look through very quickly now because uh, we will look at the into detail as as we go along. Yeah, even they have the prices in, in Shanghai whatsoever. Now, what I'm interested to show you is this. Akadise has produced a composite tender price index, all right? And then um, I know the director of Akadise who can explain to us very good what do, we, what do he mean by composite tender price index. I will share with you his link in later on so that you can read for yourself what does he mean by that. But for time being, this is what a tender price index looks like. So tender price index actually been divided into several quarters. Quarter 1, 2015, quarter 2, 2015, quarter 3 and quarter 4. And this uh, base year is 2000. Base year is the year whereby you do your base index equal to 100. Okay, we will learn about that. But you can see that it's only finished to 2021. Two. By right, it should continue to 2024. There is a way to predict to 2024, but there again, I wouldn't mention in this particular class. I want you to show to you, this is what a tender price index look like. Okay, Ayn, are you there? Ayn? Ayn? Yes, Bondu. Okay, Ayn, give me the tender price index for quarter 4 2020 quarter 4 2020 um 171.9 right. you pasang sesuatu tak dia agak rendah kenapa agaknya hmm mungkin uh, economy growth is uh, decrease apa berlaku in 2020? Oh, COVID-19. Yes, COVID. COVID start bila? 2020. Eh, betul ke? Eh, 1990. Ah, you puasan tak apa yang berlaku dekat tender price index tersebut? Daripada 2019 hmm. kepada 2020, you nampak tak the index goes down? Yes. Agaknya kenapa? Sebab tak ada orang membuat rumah time tu. Ya, yeah, time tu kan construction industry is actually experiencing a very difficult stage. So it be reflected in the tender price index because tender price index reflect the current 
uh, ataupun di market condition. So at that time, particular time, berlakunya pandemik, you can see that the number going down and down and down. What we call it a constant or a weightage, yeah? it going down. But as as we recover in 2020, you can see it picking up very, very high. Okay, so I am sure you can reflect with that. Okay, so um, even uh, 2017 also, we have issues with the currency. So the number actually drops. Okay, so this is just to tell you, you will learn about tender price index. Yeah, so uh, I, I say about that, uh, you can see yeah, there is a sharp fall in 2019 and a rise after 2024. Okay. Uh, where else? But apart from tender price index, there is also a building cost index. Here also you can see the prices of uh, fluctuations of materials. Okay. Um, I don't want to go in, 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 in any other details, but I want you to download this particular archetype from time to time. I just have another few more minutes. Um, we will stop. As I said, I want, I want to stop early. Uh, to give you some some times for you to break before your afternoon class. Yeah? I don't have a break now. I'm sorry I don't ask you to go to toilet for 10 minutes or 20 minutes because you are at home. Okay. Otherwise, in class, we have a, a, a 10 minute break. Uh, okay. This is something I want to show you. Okay. This is the director of uh, what I call it, Akadise last time or director of uh, JUBM. He has the link in. And I want you to open his link in. Believe it, believe it or not, he is my ex-student in 1990s. Uh, director of JBM adalah saya punya anak murid saya yang antara yang paling saya sayang lah sebab dia sangat hormat kat cikgu sampai sekarang. He's a very uh, respectable QS. Dia tidak lagi dengan JBM sekarang, dia dah join MRT Corp. Tetapi semasa dia dalam JBM yeah, dia selalu publish a lot of notes dalam dia punya LinkedIn. So I want you to actually always look into his LinkedIn. So dekat sini dia cerita pasal building cost standard price index etc etc and questions and answer comment and so and so forth. So that is something that I want you to actually look into dalam LinkedIn pun you boleh cari information. Another one that I just stumble across before I come to your class is this one here, Building Cost Information Service Malaysia, BCISM, in Petalin Jaya. This is the new cost book 2023. When I see you later on, face to face, I'll give you a copy of the hard copy of cost book yang saya ada. Yeah, you can have it free from me. Saya ada banyak cost book. Tapi ianya adalah yang 2022. You can have it. Ha? Kat sini you boleh tengok this is also um, cost data banyak kat sini. You boleh dapatkan daripada uh, various sources. So can I just go to the next one ya? Yeah? Okay, uh, I will go to the next one. Just use senang. Uh, this one pointer senang. Okay, now I'm also, you can find cost data dalam um, a lot of uh, blog, vlog ataupun blog. Uh, for example, this commercial manager kan, dia selalu discuss about macam mana nak buat cost estimate and cost data. Tu tak semestinya you dapat daripada tu. Sometimes there are several quantity surveyor who share uh, blog kan. Uh, this is a very good reference. I nak you download this. Tolong simpan. Uh, Dr. Ros Anis, are you there? Anis Ros. Rosniza, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yeah, this is a very good, uh, Dr. Anis, this is a very good reference yang saya baru jumpa, yang mana sangat berguna untuk kita punya kelas. So please download this. Um, Ianya merupakan harga yang paling terkini uh, Graris Panduan Anggaran Kerja Projek. Nanti kita kita tengok ya, but, but for the time being, saya nak tunjuk sahaja dahulu. Okay, this is another cost data. Kawan you dah cakap tadi. Ya, kalau Cik Nasyari lah, kalau dia buat cost estimate, dia akan dapat daripada, dia ada firm ya. Cik Nasyari adalah one of the director of uh, firm. 
dia gunakan kos uh, dia kata kalau tanya saya lah bonda saya guna kos uh, quantity survey online sebab kat sini updated Januari 2024 so memang dia ter sangat terkini sebab apa kat sini the price already uh, include a degree of profit and it's for clown Valley Malaysia and around the region so you tengok kat situ tensar bar tengok harga dia per kilogram ya yeah. ready mix concrete etc etc so this is a very good for your apart study for your estimate tolonglah uh, subscribe to to all of this yeah let me just go right now all right this is another cost data yang um, dalam uh, bentuk big data all right i share with you this particular youtube now big data ataupun kita panggil apa uh, 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 dalam i 4.0 there's a lot of way to estimates that use big data beam cost estimating ya yeah? so i want you to don't re disregard ya yeah? jangan buat oh saya tak pernah tengok ni it's available in the youtube so as we go along the subject if you want to find ya yeah, cost um, cost estimate yang menggunakan big data feel free to open any of this uh, what do you call it um, youtube channel ya yeah? uh, kita tengok kat sini 5d beam Tengok. Okay. 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 So you boleh tengok kat sini macam mana dia present cost estimates using 5D beam. Yeah. Okay. You can use golden um, QB cost etc etc. So it is available online. So this is a much more advanced um, types of um, why they call it um, cost data using big data, using beam, etc, etc. So let me just go further down. Okay, let me just go further down. I don't know why. Um, it just stop at that. Um, right. Okay, what else is there? Okay. Ah, this one here. Block. Yeah. Saya suka tengok block QS sebab orang selalu discuss about ya yeah, harga terkini uh, problem dia orang buat estimates jangan uh, tak sekali tak tengok benda ni ya sebab kat sini dia, dia tunjuk macam-macam information about you doing estimates ya macam-macam cara you guna life cycle costing you guna story enclosure method superficial method unit method ya yeah. always open the quantity surveying block whether it is overseas or malaysia the knowledge is applicable all right so that's also Uh, something that I want you to start opening, yeah. Uh, understanding different types of estimates using software. There was also several blog that discuss about uh, since one, uh, um, what they want to comment about different types of estimates, yeah. All these are very, very essential for you as you go through. You don't have to do it now, but I want you to be aware. Yeah, there is such thing called financial method of estimates, yeah, whereby you can use net present value to do your preliminary estimates, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, these are some of the ways to do estimates that is available, okay, online. Uh, this one here, it was quite interesting. This is something I stumbled today. This lady, yeah, actually, this lady is actually giving a lecture on easy QS. She have a series of lecture about how to do estimating. Yeah, at a very early stage and also later stage. And it's meant for QS, but it's of course, she just, she will explain everything, all right? The example and everything, how you estimate the floor the structure. I normally love to see this kind of channel, even though the, the accent is quite weird, but there again, This a platform for you to understand how to actually supplement your lecture notes. Okay, I give you an example. They actually go to to do, uh, for example, estimate using cubic methods and so on. I find she is very, very good in her explanation. But there again, her accent you have to be very mindful. Okay, etc. etc. Banyak lagi ya. Saya tak nak go into any detail. But what I'm trying to say to you, alright, is that 
there are plenty of sources of course data you can go to departments of statistics yeah for example you can go to pwcic or you can go through the online what you need to like when you go to online hang on when you go to online what you can do is you can type ratol for jkr let me just go here and provide ratol r-a-t-o-l ratol jkr will produce you with shadows of rates and informations so you can have jkr online okay here also sources of cost data i don't know why it happened but you know you can go to jkr p w c i c just now i open it's okay but now um it asks just now i can open it all right uh, i have saved it somewhere but please do have a look at jadua kada harga shadow of rates provided by jkr you know kat mana nak dapatkan kada harga etc etc also it be very nice kalau you dapat tengok bills of quantities as well uh, for example you dapat tengok juga uh, online manufacturers and so on and so forth okay so i'm i'm going to stop here for the time being i'm not going to go more than this ladies and gentlemen because it's a bit too much for the very first lecture what i want to actually say to you guys is yeah what i want to say to you guys is like this there are various of sources of cost data but picking the reliable cost data is very important remember yeah garbage in garbage out if you use not updated cost data if you use cost data which is very very long time ago you can't actually reflect the true prices so always go to the most current prices failing of which if you don't have a current prices you have to do a certain adjustment whether you adjust the location the sizes you adjust the flow height you adjust for the uh, types of uh, uh, quantities qualities etc etc now that's all for today yeah uh, for as an introductions next week we will look very closely at the main cost data which is from bills of quantities what's so good about bills of quantity data what not so good about bills of quantity data and how we want to make sure that if you want to use rate from the bills of quantity we actually can update that to include the current market conditions all right so i will stop here i will go around the class any question from the floor any soalan yeah dini so far so good Understand? Yes. Boleh faham tak? Dini, I'm I'm talking to you. Just one day. Boleh. Okay, kuat sikit ya. Eh? Alif, are you right? Hi Carl, are you there? So far so good? Yes, madam. Boleh faham? Boleh, boleh. Boleh, okay. Nabila are you okay? Any questions? No, no, no. Ada soalan yang nak ditanya? Mm, tak ada. Okay, all right. Adriana, what's your work for next week? Mm, to calculate my mother's house. Yes. What, 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 what calculate? Calculate what? Calculate the cost data. Oi, eh? no. <laughs> calculate apa? Is it something like that? I... Ah, about <laughs> cost. Okay. All right, right. Aida, you tolong betulkan Adriana. Apa yang you kena calculate next week? Aida Liana, sorry, ada dua orang Aida. Okay, lepas tu. Uh -huh. Cari Cari Lepas dah akan kulit dalam meter square Kali apa? Lepas tu cari apa? Kos Per Per meter square 
Okay. Alright. Cari gross floor area. Kali dengan cost per meter square. Okay. Natasha, kat mana nak dapat cost per meter square? Dekat JUBS website. JUBM. Atas website. Selain daripada tu, boleh dapat daripada mana? Tak semestinya okay. daripada JUBM. Yes. Uh, QS online or another website. Uh, yang ada publish cost per meter square untuk rumah. Rumah setingkat, rumah dua tingkat, rumah flat dan sebagainya. Baik. Bonda nak tanya satu soalan yang sangat mudah. Macam mana kita nak kira gross floor area ya? Daripada dalam ke ukuran daripada dalam ke ukuran daripada luar? Luar. Ukuran daripada dalam ke ukuran daripada luar? Wow. Siapa boleh jawab kat bonda? Dalam, dalam ke? Dalam, siapa yang cakap tu? Sabrina. Sabrina, okay. Saya bonda nak bagi contoh to make sure you faham apa yang you nak buat. Ya, yeah, bonda risau you kalau you tak faham. So bonda nak bagi satu contoh. Tengok daripada apa yang bonda nak illustrate ni. Bonda akan buat. Katakanlah, okay, alright. Okay. Boleh nampak tak? Mana? Okay, bonda akan draw eh. Menggunakan pen. Okay. Alright. Allahu Akbar. Tak boleh draw lah bonda punya uh, very bad. Um, bonda akan insert um, katakanlah insert uh, picture shape. Okay. Shape. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Katakanlah ni rumah mak awak ya. Eh? Alright. Apa yang you kena kira bila you nak kira area untuk rumah mak Macam mana kita kiraan untuk area macam mana? Apa kali apa? Land kali? Okay. So you, yang ini kali ya. Okay katakanlah ini empat, ini dua. So rumah mak you total area dia Oh GFA gross floor area adalah 4 kali 2 iaitu 8 meter square. So you dapat 8 meter square untuk rumah mak you. Pengiraannya dari belah dinding dalam. Bukan luar rumah. Dinding dalam. Dia panggil inner face of external wall. Permukaan dalam, dinding, luar. Alright? Get it right. Bukan daripada luar rumah, daripada dalam rumah. Okay? Alright. That's the very first thing. Termasuklah kalau kat dalam tu ada toilet ke whatever, langgar je. Kita kira daripada hujung Belah dalam dinding luar kepada hujung dinding dalam belah luar Daripada uh, sama juga sebelah satu lagi Kita tak kisah kat dalam tu ada toilet langgar je Ada partition ke whatever Kita ambil kiraan belah dalam ya Land time by width Lepas kita dapat kita nak kira Berapakah kita punya price Kita akan kira equals to 8 meter square which is your gross floor area kali berapa RM per meter square. Okay. Berapa harga untuk RM per meter square untuk bangunan tersebut. Ini bergantunglah sama ada bangunan you adalah flat. So carilah harga untuk kos per meter square for flat. Ataupun rumah kampung. Ya, yeah, rumah kampung. Katakanlah rumah kampung ni tak ada data. Ya Allah, semua rumah batu, rumah saya, rumah kampung. Siap ada uh, rumah saya pun rumah kampung kat Terengganu ya. Macam mana saya nak buat ya? Gunakan anggaran sahaja. Ingat, estimate ni perkupakan anggaran. Katakanlah carilah rumah satu tingkat. Kalau rumah you mak, uh, satu tingkat, 
rumah bata satu tingkat, rumah you adalah rumah kayu. Katakanlah rumah bata tu 400 per meter square. So rumah kayu can be a lot cheaper or a lot expensive depending on type of kayu. But there again, it is estimate. As long as you around the region of 400 ni is good enough. Sebab dia bagi you some indication tau. Daripada you tidak ada asas langsung berapa per meter square, it's better to use a similar bangunan walaupun berlainan uh, dia punya construction method or construction material. Saya nak anggaran sahaja. Alright? So, uh, katakanlah rumah you, rumah flat. Flat, tingkat kelima. So, kira belah dalam sahaja. Senang sahaja. It's a very easy one. So far, do you understand? Faham ya? Eh? Yes, pun dia. Very easy. A very simple. So, lepas ni, dah measure tu cakap kat mak. Mak, mak. Rumah kita banyak ni harga ni rupanya. Mak kata, hang, hang salah kot. Mak dulu buat murah je. Tak sampai macam tu. Ya. Yeah? Uh, so, the very least, my takeaway for today, by the end of this lecture, you know how to measure your mother house. Secara apa? Anggaran sahaja. Bukan tepat, anggaran sahaja. Minggu depan kita akan tengok rumah tu macam mana pula? Berapa tingkat pula? Specification dia apa? Duduk kawasan mana pula? Ha, yang tu kita worry about later. Okay? Kalau tak ada apa-apa lagi, kita stop here for today. Alright, thank you very much for being participative. Thank you for opening your... Um, your um, uh, It's like can we have uh, kedatangan hari ni Kita buka semua um, Kita punya as usual lah Like masa kita buat COVID dulu Kita ada screen uh, Class Rack can you take our picture Give yourself a very big smile everybody Cuba buat love sikit macam ni ke So that I can see you very clearly Adam tolong ambil gambar Adam Okay buka semua ya Okay buka-buka Okay, give yourself a very big smile. Big smile. Okay, saya pun nak bagi love satu. Okay, letakkan ni di dalam kelas group WhatsApp. Ini adalah kedatangan untuk hari ni. Ada 27 orang. Termasuk saya dengan Uh, Dr. Anis ada 29 orang. Jazakallah khairan kasirah. Before I uh, 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 go, uh, Dr. Anis nak kata apa-apa? Bagi kelas uh, 4C, siapa yang join kelas syariah, please PM me immediately. Terus kita ada kelas petang ni, eh? <laughs> Itu je. Thank you. Okay. If nothing else, okay, goodbye and selamat berbuka puasa and nice meeting you. I hope I see you in person soon. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam.